guys, so there are two ways of playing jazz. You can either play hot or you can play cool. Now these two undercurrents or approaches to playing jazz have been around since the very beginning of jazz, but it was only in the 1950s that playing cool became its very own genre. And so the best way to understand cool jazz is to understand hot jazz. Now, numerous bands that played hot jazz labelled themselves as such. For example, Louis Armstrong and his Hot Five, Louis Armstrong and his Hot Seven, or Django Reinhardt's Quintet du Hot Club de France. And there were also two different subgenres of swing music. There was Hot Swing, which was played by people like Duke Ellington, and Sweet Swing, um, which was played by people like Benny Goodman where Sweet Swing was restrained and polite for the sophisticated white bourgeoisie, while Hot Swing was daring and fast and primal with lots of improvisation and heavy driving rhythm um, and a strong blues feeling that was rough and dirty. Now, Bebop was also considered hot. Now, if you ask a scientist, they'll tell you that hot things have a lot of energy, while cool things do not. And it's the same with jazz. Hot jazz was high energy jazz, while cool jazz, being the opposite of hot, was low energy, or at least relatively low energy jazz. So the characteristics of each are as follows. So hot jazz was very expressionistic. It was very high energy, very emotive and extroverted and raw. It was generally played at a fast tempo and had a driving and heavy rhythm. You would improvise on or ahead of the beat. You would use a wide range of dynamics and use the extreme high register to improvise. It also used wide vibrato, occasional staccato and strong accenting of notes. Bebop at least had very angular melodies and its goal was to fill every single beat in every single bar with heaps of notes. You try and squeeze as many notes as you can into a bar. It was also homophonic, which just means that you have a rhythm section playing chords, which backs up a soloist who's improvising. It had a very heavy and hard touch, was usually in 4-4 time, was very blues influenced and used a lot of blue notes, and there was lots of improvisation. Now, cool jazz, on the other hand, was a bit more rationalist. It was relatively low energy, it was restrained, relaxed, a little bit aloof, introverted, and a little bit intellectual. It was generally played at a slow or medium tempo, so like ballads. There was no driving heavy rhythm, instead there was generally a light and relatively quiet rhythm section. When improvising, you would generally play behind the beat, use relatively little dynamics, and more or less use the middle or maybe the low register. There was limited, if any, vibrato, and a lot of the notes were played legato. You would use a very understated attack and unaccented notes. It also had very smooth, melodic, and lyrical melodies and wide use of silence. You could have silence for bars at a time. You didn't need to fill every single moment with notes. It generally used polyphony or counterpoint. For example, a very important and famous cool jazz band was Jerry Mulligan's Pianoless Quartet, which being pianoless meant that no one was playing the chords. Instead, they relied on polyphony, that is, each instrument playing its own melodic line. It had a very soft touch. It sometimes used odd time signatures, especially the Dave Brubeck Quartet. And it was influenced by classical music and therefore relied more on composition than improvisation. Now, cool jazz arose in the 1950s as a reaction to bebop, which, as I've already stated, was hot. So bebop was fast, loud, heavy, angular, high-pitched, high-energy, and dense. So Cool Jazz tried to do the exact opposite. It was slow, soft, light, lyrical, low-pitched, low-energy, and sparse. Right, so Hot and Cool are just two different approaches to playing jazz. You could play the exact same song with a hot approach or with a cool approach. For example, let's just take the beginning of the jazz standard All of Me. So if you were going to play that hot, you could play it as follows.
wanted to play the same song cool, you could play it as follows. Now for a great example of the difference between playing hot and playing cool, have a listen to the live version of Louis Armstrong playing All of Me. You'll hear that it's very hot. He uses wide vibrato and wide range of dynamics and you hear it's really extroverted. And for a cool example of that same song, have a listen to Lester Young's solo when he's playing it with Billie Holiday. Now, there were a number of early jazz musicians who inspired the cool way of playing, um, including Bix Bierdebeck and Frankie Tramboa, and hopefully I'm pronouncing those names correctly, but especially have a listen to Lester Young, because he's considered really the forefather of cool jazz. Now, Lester Young played in Count Basie's big band. Now, while a lot of soloists at the time were playing with a really forceful and emotive style, for example, listen to Coleman Hawkins, Young was playing in a very soft and vibratoless and smooth and restrained and relaxed and kind of breathy and airy style, and he would often play behind the beat. And Young didn't just play cool, he epitomized cool. Young was always smartly dressed, laid back, played with a sax at a slight angle, um, and used a lot of slang. In fact, he's said to have even popularized and coined the term cool as a term of approval. So in the future, whenever you describe something as cool, you're actually partially indebted to Lester Young. So in a sense, cool in jazz is similar to cool in the schoolyard. And so cool jazz was inspired by Lester Young, but it was created, like so many other jazz innovations, by Miles Davis. Now, Miles Davis started out playing bebop, like all the other jazz musicians at the time. But he was always less intense, less aggressive, less quick, less loud, less high up, and less busy than the other bebop mu musicians like Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie. He always played a little bit more relaxed, and he generally used the middle register of his trumpet and was inclined to use a lot more silence. And so, in a sense, he wasn't really well suited to playing bebop. So, in the late 1940s, he got a group of musicians together and created the Birth of the Cool recordings. Now, these recordings were innovative because... They were recorded by a nonette, which is slightly larger than the usual bebop um, quartet or quintet. It was influenced by classical music in its forms and arrangements, so they didn't just play um, AABA or 12-bar blues forms. The, the forms were a little bit more intricate and classical. And they were influenced by a type of chamber music sound. As I already mentioned, they used polyphony or counterpoint rather than just playing the melody or the head in unison like they did in bebop. And they introduced new instruments to jazz, such as the French horn or the tuba, and the flute and the oboe also made an appearance in cool jazz. They also relied more on composition and less on improvisation. And it was more emotionally detached and intellectual. So in a word, it was cool. It was restrained, soft, lyrical, and vibratoless. Now, cool jazz was criticized at the time for being a kind of white man's jazz, because it was often played by white university-educated musicians, and it was classical-influenced rather than blues and swing-influenced. And it was more popular with white audiences than bebop, which was kind of seen as more African-American and radical. But this argument is probably less relevant these days. We're no longer in the 1950s. And besides, music is flexible and has fuzzy boundaries. There are plenty of jazz-influenced classical pieces, like Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue. And there are plenty of jazz musicians who are influenced by classical music, like Charles Mingus, Bill Evans, Art Tatum, Herbie Hancock, Keith Jarrett, and Count Suthers. 
And there was also a synthesis of jazz and classical music that was attempted later with the third stream genre of music. So cool isn't so much what you play as the way you play it. You still play all the same jazz standards, you just do so with a more relaxed vibe. And this is what makes cool jazz a little bit harder to classify as a genre. For example, Lenny Tristano played atonal, kind of free jazz-esque jazz, um, but is still considered to have played cool jazz because he played in a restrained way. Or Stan Getz, for example, played Afro-Brazilian Latin jazz in the form of bossa novas, but is still considered to play cool jazz again because he played in a restrained way. Or similarly, the modern jazz quartet was heavily influenced by Baroque music, so incorporated a lot of Bach-like fugues into their music. But again, this was considered cool jazz because they played in a restrained way. And as we've already seen, the idea of playing cool existed before cool jazz, in the form of Bix's Chicago-style jazz or Lester's swing jazz. And you can also argue that many subsequent styles of jazz were also cool. But it's only cool music of the 1950s that we generally classify as cool jazz. And another thing to note is that it's cool jazz, not cold jazz. Right? You don't want to just be mechanical, like a robot or, or a piano role playing. You want to still have some nuance to your playing. Um, it's just not sort of heart on your sleeve, pouring it all out, emotional playing of hot jazz. Right, again, I like to think of it as cool jazz is introverted and hot jazz is extroverted. Just because you're introverted doesn't mean you don't have feeling and emotion. It's just a little bit hidden. Now, I mentioned Jerry Mulligan's Pianoless Quartet before, um, and that was actually also with Chet Baker. So that Pianoless Quartet is considered a classic cool jazz and a very popular cool jazz ensemble or band. And Jerry Mulligan wrote a couple of jazz standards, one of which is Walking Shoes, which is a great little song. And so that is largely it for me. Um, thank you for watching. And so I've listed a whole bunch of cool jazz artists up here in the picture in picture for you to have a listen to. Um, so go and do that. And otherwise, as always, feel free to leave any questions or comments. And thanks for watching. See ya.